The IRS just announced new tax brackets for 2025, meaning you can earn more money next year before getting bumped up into the next bracket. They also increased the standard deduction and made some adjustments to retirement plan contributions. So we're gonna break down everything you need to know. But before we get into that, I do wanna clear up how tax brackets actually work. Somebody once told me that they actually turned down a raise because it would push them up into the higher tax bracket and they would actually be making less after taxes which is just not at all true. That's not how taxes work. Now, I can't blame anybody for thinking that because we're not really taught this, but hey, at least you know how to diagram a sentence and do long division. I think the best way to think about our tax brackets is buckets of water. Each bucket represents a tax rate or a tax bracket ranging from 10% to 37%. Let's assume you're making $120,000. Simply looking at the tax brackets, you'd fall under the 24% tax rate. But your entire $120,000 of income is not taxed at 24%. Instead, it works like this. For this year, 2024, the first 11,600 of your income is taxed at 10%. Once you fill up that 10% bucket with income, you start filling up the 12% bucket. Every dollar over 11,600 is taxed at 12%. Now, once that bucket is filled, you move on to the 22% bucket. Income from 47,150 to 100,525 is taxed at 22%. Now, if you're making $120,000, you filled up that entire 22% bucket and begin to fill up the 24% bucket. But only your income over 100,525 is taxed at 22%. So only 19,475 is taxed at that 24% rate not the entire 120,000. Now, every dollar you earn past that 120,000 will continue to be taxed at 24% until you reach the top of that tax bracket, which is 191,950. Any income over that would be taxed at 32% until you fill up that bucket. Every year, the IRS adjusts these income ranges to account for inflation, meaning each year those buckets get a little bit bigger. You can fill those buckets up with a little more income before having to move on to the next bucket or the next tax rate, allowing you to earn a little more money without necessarily being taxed at a higher rate which is a good thing. So let's look at how these income ranges are changing for 2025. The IRS increased the top income for each bracket by about 2.8%. So for single filers, these are the income ranges for 2024, and here are the income ranges for 2025. So if you are currently in the 22% bracket, you can earn an additional $2,825 and still stay in that 22% bucket. Remember, tax rates are not changing. Those are staying the same and have been the same since 2018. All that's changing is the income ranges at which those tax rates apply. So this is the additional income that you can earn in 2025 without a portion of that income being taxed at a higher rate. The idea of this is if you get a raise that's roughly in line with inflation, not sure how often that actually happens, that your effective tax rate essentially stays the same. So the taxes that you pay as a percentage of your income stays roughly the same. For married couples filing joint, these are the income ranges for 2024. And here are the income ranges for 2025. Again, an increase to the top end of each range by about 2.8%. So if you and your spouse combined are in the 24% bracket, you can earn an additional $10,700 in 2025 and still remain in the 24% bucket. Now, one very important thing to know about these tax rates, the 10% to the 37%, these actually expire at the end of 2025. These tax rates were put in place in 2018 with the passing of the Tax Cut and Jobs Act, but the rates were not permanent. They were only set to go through the end of 2025 after which we're set to go back to the pre-2018 tax rates, which range from 10% to 39.6%. So here are the tax brackets for 2025, and here are the anticipated tax rates for 2026, or the pre-2018 tax rates, assuming no change in tax legislation before then. As you can see, after adjusting for inflation, the 2017 slash 2026 tax rates are about three to 4% higher for most people. Now, I personally believe that the next administration is most certainly going to make some changes to tax laws. If I had to guess, I think they're gonna let the current tax rates go out through the end of 2025 and then have new tax legislation begin January 1st of 2026. We just don't know what that's gonna look like yet or when it's gonna become effective. So one planning strategy that is worth considering while we do know the tax rates, is Roth conversions. So if you have money sitting in a traditional or a rollover IRA, you can choose to take a portion or all of that and convert it to a Roth. Of course, that counts as income and you pay taxes on that today out of pocket, but then that money becomes a Roth, it grows tax-free and can be withdrawn tax-free in retirement. So if you were gonna do this, how would you determine how much to convert in 2024, 2025. Well, let's go back to the example of being single and making $120,000. In 2025, you have $77,300 left of income within the 24% bracket before anything above that gets taxed at 32%. So if you believe tax rates are gonna be higher than 24% in retirement, then it may make sense to take up to 77,300 
of that traditional IRA and convert it to a Roth IRA, pay tax on it today at 24%, and then let it grow tax-free, be withdrawn tax-free down the road when tax rates are potentially gonna be higher. So in theory, you're paying taxes on it today at a lower rate rather than in the future at a higher rate. If you have more questions on that or need help with that, just reach out using the link in the description. Okay, a few other tax changes for 2025. The capital gains brackets are also getting an inflation adjustment. This is the tax rate on investment gains on investments that have been held for longer than one year. Those tax rates are currently zero, 15, and 20%. These are the income ranges for those brackets for 2024. And here they are for 2025. Again, we're getting about a 2.8% increase in those income ranges, thereby allowing you to earn a little more before reaching the next capital gains tax rate. The standard deduction is also getting an increase for 2025. Single filers are getting a $400 increase. Married couples filing joint are getting an $800 increase and head of household filers are getting a $600 increase. That's about a 2.7% increase from the standard deduction from 2024. Currently about 90% of people are taking the standard deduction as opposed to the alternative, which is itemizing your deductions. In order to itemize your deductions, you generally have to have some pretty big expenses, medical expenses, state taxes, mortgage interest, charitable contributions. You only get a deduction for those things if together they exceed the standard deduction, which is just not the case for a lot of people. And this increase of the standard deduction in 2025 will likely even shift more people to taking the standard deduction over the itemized deductions. And this high standard deduction is actually another thing that is set to expire at the end of 2025. Assuming no changes to tax legislation before then, the standard deduction is set to get cut in half starting in 2026. But that's a discussion for the later date and really a decision for the next administration. 2025 retirement account contribution limits were also just announced. The IRA and Roth IRA contribution limits remains at $7,000 for 2025, which is same as it was for 2024. Catch up contribution, which is an additional contribution that people can make if they're age 50 or older, that will remain at $1,000 as well, which is the same as it was in 2024. But the income limit for the Roth IRA was adjusted for inflation, meaning you can make more in 2025 and still contribute to the Roth IRA directly as opposed to having to do the backdoor approach. 401k contribution limits did increase, however, by $500 from $23,000 to $23,500. And then catch-up contribution remains the same as 2024, $7,500 for those age 50 and older. A few other areas that got an inflation adjustment, the earned income tax credit for qualifying taxpayers who have three or more children, that maximum credit is $8,046, an increase from $7,830 for tax year 2024. The annual exclusion for gifts also increased from $18,000 to $19,000, meaning you can give somebody $19,000 in a year without having to file a gift tax return. The estate tax exemption went from $13.6 million to almost $14 million. Obviously, that applies to very few people. The adoption credit also got adjusted for inflation, so the maximum credit for qualified adoption expenses went from 16,810 in 2024 to 17,280 for 2025. All right, that's it for now. Like or subscribe if you found this helpful. See you next time.